Many, many congratulations to actually all three of you. I know there's a bit of a heartbreak here as far as the Reddy camp is concerned, but many, many congratulations to all of you. I don't need to introduce you to this uh, audience. All of them know you. All of us know you. Uh, can I though start with you since you're the youngest, Shriyanka? Sure. What's with you and Virat Kohli? Your entire Instagram feed, Twitter feed, everything is filled only with Virat Kohli for some reason. Now, is it, all, is it because you guys are part of the same team? Or is it something because else? Because I love him so much. Ha, <laughs> was <laughs> uh, No, I think I have a special connection with Virat because uh, I grew up watching him play. Uh, so he's been an inspiration for me and many youngsters in India or over the world. So when we won the cup, uh, he gave a sweet message for me and that's actually the highlight for me uh, for the year now. So he said, hi Shriyanka, uh, well bold. Ha. And that's still in my mind, it's still going on and on and on. So it's something very special moment for me. No, here's the thing. Here's how you caption is. You say, he knows my name. Of course he'll know your name. You won the, I mean, you won the purple cap. You've got 13 wickets. Royal Challengers Bangalore has won the WPL. Why would he not know your name? Two years back, I was sitting in the crowd chanting Virat's name and for RCB and now winning the cup and he actually knowing my name is something... A very special moment because he's a legend of the sport and um, just he knowing my name is very, very special. I don't know, personally for me it's very special uh, because he's a true legend. Uh, the last couple of years, actually the last 15 months have been stellar for you, haven't they? <laughs> Absolutely, everything on and off, everything's happening. It's been like a movie so far for us, uh, so enjoying it. Uh, can I get you in as well? Uh, your, yes, name, your name has faith and joy both in it. And uh, you're part of the Royal Challengers team that won the Women's Premier League. Yes, sir. Before that, I, I read an interview that tells us, and we'll get to your story in just a bit, but I read an interview where you said before the WPL ca call came, I was uh, almost ready to give up. Why? I was playing uh, uh, this domestic circle for, uh, for like more than 17 years. So there was nothing big happening in my career. So I thought every year I play and there is nothing big is not going to happen. So I thought uh, there is no point. So I was, I was uh, thought of giving up, but there was something inside me kept me driving. I was a believer of God. So I always pray that God, uh, I've, I've worked so much. I should be getting something. I mean, I, sh I should reach somewhere. So it kept me going. So... And are you glad you didn't quit? Are you glad you didn't quit? Yes, sis. <laughs> Your story is incredible. I'll get to that in just a bit. But since you've spoken about God, can I just get this young girl in once again, Arundhati, with your permission? <laughs> yeah. Ah, so what is with every time you're going to bowl, you're doing something, something? What is that? What mantra are you japoing? Because it certainly is working for you. There's no mantra. This Instagram has made it a mantra now because I have a routine. But that went viral, no? Huh? It was gone viral and everyone keeps sending me the same thing. I said, I have been seeing it every now and then now. So it's not a mantra. I just kind of visualize before I bowl because I want to breathe in and breathe out. Because there's a lot happening around the ground. You're bowling, you're running, you're all sort of things are happening. But I just wanted to... I just want to take a moment for myself to just set that tone in because I'm going to bowl those six good balls. Those are very important for the team. So just visualizing that where the game is and just being ready for the uh, ball I deliver. Shobna, between you and Shreyanka, there was a bit of a competition going as well, <laughs> right? You want to tell our viewers about that? You get 13 by the end of it, you get 12, you end up winning the Purple Cup. Uh, what was the dynamic before and after? To be very honest, we both didn't know we were in that uh, stage. Uh, because I personally you you weren't counting how many wickets you are taking. <laughs> Between the two of you, you have what? How many? <laughs> what? I don't think of the first half of the tournament. She even I had two wickets. Aru. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I ended up getting a lot of wickets in Delhi, but uh, I really didn't know that I was in the yeah in contention of the highest wicket taker. Yeah, of course, I knew that I, I was getting those 12 wickets. Uh, but we never know, like, uh, uh, who is ahead, who is... Uh... Until and unless it's the same team, I don't mind that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the purple Get cap the purple is cap, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Arundhati. Yes. Oh, uh, it's just a mean question, I think. But someone has to ask it, so I'll ask it. 
तो वॉट इज इट लाइक फॉर डेली कैपिटल टू गेट टू द फाइनल ट्वाइस एंड लूज बोर्ड टाइम्स ऑफकोर्स इट्स इट्स लाइक अ हार्ट ब्रेक बिकॉज इट हैपन बोथ टाइम्स नाउ वी वर ऑल वेरी डिसअपॉइंटेड आफ्टर द फाइनल बट आई गेस यू नो वी हैव टू मूव ऑन फ्रॉम मूव ऑन फ्रॉम दिस एंड गिव आर सेल्फ द बेस्ट चांस टू डू वेल नेक्स्ट ईयर अगेन and again meg 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 lanning our, our captain spoke to us after the game and then there's one thing that she said about she just said that the sun will rise again and hopefully it does for us the next year but have you guys managed to analyze gadbad kya ho rahi hai what is going wrong i think in game of cricket it keeps happening but i think for us to still reach the final is a great achievement both the years i think we've been the most consistent team in the past two years i think it's just the final final game that that's been stopping us but i think eventually we'll get there next year hopefully i want to ask you how life has changed after wpl we have had two editions now yeah. one one by mumbai indians the other one by royal challengers bangalore uh, you've been playing cricket as you said for the last 17 years how has life changed after wpl do more people recognize you are you surprised that my god look at this stadium it is packed is that an experience you had before the wpl came oh, my life completely changed after wpl uh, we we lifted the trophy and we, we went back to bangalore and people started recognizing us wherever we go they started coming to us and asking for pictures and that's that's something new for us so it completely changed and at the same time uh, you know uh, in fact uh, in the rcb unbox event also people were there to support us Uh, they were just chanting rcb rcb so that was so nice to see i mean i saw that crowd that video going viral of a crowd just chanting rcb 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 that must have been a uh, mind boggling right just to see that just to add to that huh? huh? we just thought the rcb chants were in just in bangalore huh? but the first game that we played in delhi huh? we thought we'll get a lot of home support huh? but the crowd just went rcb rcb the entire time in delhi i think the fan base that they have is amazing oh ho ho delhi mein dhoka ho gaya delhi capitals ke sath <laughs> <laughs> but what was that like i mean when we started off our first leg uh, of the wpl happened in bangalore and we were like oh my god we were so excited what to do now because the talks were all about rcb crowd being so loyal and then when we got that fan uh, it was just amazing because playing in front of our own fans is something uh, which everyone would like to do that and uh, it was very special we got that crowd that we got that attention from the crowd and then we moved to delhi and we were like i don't think so we're going to get the crowd we were all we all had that doubt ki okay maybe not only in bangalore we might get but not in delhi but then when we went to delhi and we played against mi and dc it was like oh my god what's happening and people chanting peri peri shreyanka smriti and i was like oh my god people are really recognizing us and then when we got the cup back home in bangalore and we went to rcb bar and cafe and the crowd was packed around the bar and cafe and people were chanting her name they were like aasha 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 and then people are not only about the players it's also about the cup they're like cup pilli where's the cup where's the cup where's the cup and we like okay fine we're getting the cup wait hold on because i know how much that cup means to our own fans because they've been waiting for that cup for over 16 years now and we finally got it and they really want to see how it looks like <laughs> so it was a special moment for all of us uh, to be a part of that crowd and facing all that uh, attention since you yourself have mentioned 16 years i have no hesitation in asking that question arundhati i think we can ask them that question the one thing that gets said is look at the girls royal challengers bangalore ha huh? they managed to do in the second edition of the ipl of the women uh, women premier league what the boys have not been able to do for 16 years so i want both of you to respond to that whoever wants to go first can go first oh my god um, i don't say the I mean the boys are doing absolutely well they've because of them I think we've gotten this uh, kind of attention as well because they've set the stone for us uh, they've been working hard over the years now they also want to win they've been uh, performing well in patches and they're doing really well for the same franchise and I think uh, ladies first we've started it maybe it'll be followed by the men's team now yeah they're lucky charm you're saying <laughs> joy would you want to say something on that yeah the said the same feeling uh, ladies first so followed by men you know arundhati you were right 
you said it's very difficult to get her to talk and you can't get her to stop so you are absolutely right 100% she bang on all the questions <laughs> so let's let's try and make joy speak a little joy your journey is incredible you're 33 Thank years you. old and you your father is an auto rickshaw driver in tiruvanthapuram yes and you say the only reason it became possible for you to follow your passion was because of the kindness of your coaches yeah that they gave you the bus fare yeah and that took the stress of you and your parents and that's how you started that's incredible i mean how do your parents react to the success that they are seeing right now uh, they are still in shock i would say actually uh, you know uh, the kind of start i had it was very difficult back then uh, where i, I uh, where my coach used to pay for my uh, travel and all other expenses uh, we couldn't even buy a kit bag or something as our game is really expensive so i am so grateful to my coaches and uh, uh, my seniors they looked after me and w- whenever i required something they were there so each step they were there and helped me i'm feeling so grateful towards them joy you know when you if your if your family is uh, finding it difficult to finance your passion as a child do you also hesitate to ask them for anything there's an expensive pair of shoes i want this but let me not ask because if they can't afford it they'll be heartbroken are those moments that have come to you as well many moments like that you know uh, as a cricketer uh, we see all of the state players wearing spike shoes all those stuffs i always wanted to buy one but i cannot ask my parents if i ask and if they cannot afford that's going to hurt them so i would i would just keep quiet and uh, uh, from the time uh, the women cricket association merged with the bcci then we started getting the match fees then yeah i started buying all those cricket gears that was the moment i changed and uh, started buying cricket equipments for myself and your parents actually you want to say something arundhati i just wanted to add something on ashidi um, i have known her very closely from past 6 to 7 years because she stays in hyderabad and i am from hyderabad and then uh, i think the first and you play game, in kerala and she played from kerala yeah. <laughs> and then the, i think the first game she got a five wicket haul and i think she had a interview with smriti that me jemaima if you are aware of jemaima yes, we, yes, we of all course. sat together and we were just watching that interview and we all just got really emotional seeing that video because i don't know about them but then i have known of i have seen her struggles and i've seen her very closely and just for me to just see her doing well at that stage after facing so many problems and struggles in her life it was just great for me to see that see her doing well thank you it's also so inspiring right even when we are doing this broadcast you never know which little girl across this country is watching and thinking to herself okay i don't have enough but maybe like joy i can make something of my life you just don't know who is watching and who you are inspiring i think uh, that's the beauty of women with grit and all three of you are that joy is it true that your parents got their dth connection only to watch you play in the wpl is it true yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, they you usually paise waste mat karwana jeet ke aana no they don't watch tv much uh, so uh, uh, they just recharge just to watch me play what about you arundhati uh, i know that you've not had a i mean you've not had the challenges that joy has uh, but your mother was a volleyball player she used to she play used to be one and she couldn't pursue her dreams because of financial constraints and she ensured that nothing came in your way including studies that's very rare for a parent my mom was a, is a single mother i think she struggled a lot to make ends meet for me and my brother um like like you asked her earlier that did you feel bad asking your mom for things because she shouldn't feel bad that she can't afford it for you and There's so many I, i don't think i've ever asked my mom to buy any of the cricket stuff for me i think i've been very grateful that i had people in my cricketing career like her i had coaches who bought me stuff i think until the time i think the first spikes cricket spikes i got was after playing for india with my own money until then it was just people coaches taking care of me and again coming to my mom i think she's been a constant support for me and uh, again a lot of struggles we were not great financially uh, a lot of people in my family didn't want me to play cricket but she fought through all that and just to just to i think probably she had she had her own dream she couldn't achieve them and she wanted me to achieve it so so yeah you know for all middle class people like us financial stability is a big thing you had that financial stability in a railways job and you quit much like ms dhoni but <laughs> that's a big that, that's being very brave actually why did you do it 
lot of people thought it was stupid i don't think many thought it was brave but then are bhai main aap to bhi no it's not stupid na yeah but see again I, there's nothing against railways rail, because of because of railways i am i'm here i'm what i am because of the with the platform that it gave me but then i just felt that i was not getting enough opportunities and i wanted to do much more with the talent that i have so that was one of the main reason that i would leave railways but then again nothing against the railways i think it's an organization that has given a lot of jobs to a lot of women cricketers when they needed it and yeah i'm just thankful to it yeah what about you your dad is a cricketer right yeah he was a cricketer he was a cricketer and uh, somewhere you said i mean uh, maybe i'm paraphrasing it but you said that when you donned the blue jersey when you were got called for national duty you were actually living his dream because it was his dream to play a uh, higher level cricket and he couldn't do it and then he wanted my brother to do it he is also a cricketer he plays for pondicherry uh, state level uh, and then he didn't know that a girl can be playing the sport and then i said no pa i want to play the sport and then there was a coach of mine he recently passed away vishwanath sir he kind of says she has something in her let us start playing the sport and then my dad is like from then dropping me picking me up he kind of left his job for me to just pick up the sport and do well in the sport and then when i was 12 years i played under 16 followed by under 19 23 and seniors and then to be getting that uh, indian jersey and then video calling him and saying pai made it and then i got this it was a very special feeling i mean he's not someone who expresses his feelings uh, but i can kind of get to know because i get really connected to my dad and i could see his eyes so filled with joy and happiness so that itself made my uh, uh, day special on that particular day it was very special for me and just, and then i just gave him a hug and it was very special i just want to ask what it is like to be called for national duty you know you're stars in your own rights you're playing for these make big major clubs you have your own fan bases but national duty is national duty you're doing it for you know the indian flag what is that moment like I think there's no better feeling than than donning the Indian jersey and playing for India. I think. What does it feel like when you wear it? I mean, does it fill you with responsibility or I what is it like? There's a lot of sense of pride when you represent your country. I think for me, it's a lot of pride that I take in in playing for my country. I think uh, when you're dreaming to play for a country and it's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'll do this. Maybe I'll video call this one. Maybe I'll put it on Instagram. Maybe I'll show it off. but then when you actually get it you don't feel like doing anything because you go blank because i went blank i didn't do i didn't know how to express that feeling seeing that i just had tears in my eyes because you all dream for playing for india and then doing well for your nation doing serving your nation in a any given way and then just to wear that jersey and just seeing looking at yourself in the mirror it's like oh my god i really did it so that that feeling is you can't measure that feeling basically Joy, that's the call you're waiting for, right? Yeah, that's still a dream for me, uh, which is not so far. Which is not so far. I'm fairly certain of that. I'm, we are all fairly certain of the fact that you played so well in the WPL, and it would come. You've both spoken about your brothers, interestingly, both instrumental in pushing you to the place that you are. Why don't you speak about him a bit? Oh, well, my brother was the reason I started playing cricket. You know, he wanted to become a cricketer. Uh, but he couldn't. Uh, he was into nursing field, uh, B.Sc. nursing, and uh, uh, in uh, in Kerala, uh, back in Kerala, we play uh, the game with a paper ball. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what I read. That you actually started by playing with paper balls. Yeah, that was stuffed in milk packets, empty yes. milk packets. Yes. Yes. And we wrap it with the rubber bands. That's so how we make cricket ball back wow. in Kerala. Wow. <laughs> and we play with that uh, coconut wood bat. and that's what we play cricket i've seen those improvised bats in kerala i think yeah. kids still play with that right yeah yeah uh, that's how we started playing and my brother was the biggest inspiration for me and uh, he was a mad cricket fan and he used to watch uh, all this te- all test cricket matches back then the west indies india australia no matter who is playing and he used to make me watch the cricket game so i didn't have any other option than watching the match with him that is how i learned uh, the game i also started watching at the age of 6 only 7 i started i know all this uh, i think more than this new players i know all the old cricketers <laughs> because of him he must you he must be incredibly proud of you yeah yeah he is, he is. shyanka 
I mean, he's younger to me. Uh, so he was the one who started playing cricket in our. Uh, before you. Yeah, he started playing before me when he was five, six. Uh, but and, then. And he's the one your dad was actually training. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, even I used to go because my dad used to run an academy in Bangalore and I used to just go play with all the boys around. I never got an opportunity to play in the nets. I always used to be playing somewhere uh, sideline there with the boys and all of them. But uh, he, is, uh, he was very good that time and now see, he is like, oh my god, you played uh, earlier than me. <laughs> I mean, it's a pressure for him. Uh, he keeps saying, Shreyaka, you did so much. Now what, what about me? I said, I will help you out, don't worry, we'll just fix this together, we'll do it together. Maybe he has something to tell me, he bowls to me, I bowl to him. So it's all happening in tandem. Can I, I'm just going to get back to, you know, where they left off about life changing after WPL. I mean, I've been given a list, list of technical questions to ask you, but frankly, those questions I don't understand, so I'm not going to ask. It's about your bowling techniques, etc. But, you know, it's just life stories, I think, are just so much more interesting because, as I said, you don't know who you end up inspiring. Uh, what's life been after WPL? She's talking about the fact that airports where people are recognizing you. You know, people are coming up to you at pubs and it's saying, It's actually difficult the hanging out with her. Because huh? every next person, she keeps coming and wanting a picture with her. That's because, <laughs> that's because of her love and for Virat Kohli and is, dancing. <laughs> one more thing is, when I came home after the WPL from Delhi, and I came home, 25 people were in my house. My cousins, my friends, and there were a few unknown people who were just randomly standing outside my house and wanting to take a picture with me. And I was like, oh my god, life has really changed for me. I started feeling like a celebrity, a real one. I was like, this is, wow. <laughs> Arundhati? I think it's similar for me. I think, like, like just when you walk, walk in public, public places, just in the airports or in the malls, people start coming to you. They say, what was it before? It was never it's just uh, probably after this IPL especially that people have started recognizing me and then when they come and tell me well bold or you know again hard luck for, for the Delhi for the uh, Delhi loss but, but then it's just nice that people are recognizing not just me I think generally everywhere the fact that people are recognizing women cricketers and the fact that women's cricket is growing it's, it's very heartening to see. Uh, but was it also surprising for you to see packed stadiums? There were 10 games right? Yeah. And all 10 had packed stadiums, if I'm not mistaken. All the games. Wow. It was an amazing experience just to play in front of those crowds. Uh -huh. Amazing experience. I think, I think you just have to be there to experience it. And what was it before that? Uh, I think when, I don't know about Shrey, I think when me and Ashadi have played, I don't think that hardly anybody has come to watch our women games. Only and players and officials. Yeah, only the officials and players. Only players, coaches and officials which actually turn up to watch you. And we have come to a situation where Bangalore and Delhi were packed yeah. to see you guys play. So that's, that's a long journey. It must have been a hard journey, but it's a long journey and you're going the right way then. But I think we have to thank our former players for it. I think they have, they have given us the path and we are just probably enjoying it. But it's, them that, it's because of them that women's cricket is what it is today. So we'll talk about pay parity in just a bit. But Joy, can I ask you, I, you know... Uh, the WPL also then financially stabilizes you, right? Uh, did it financially stabilize you? Uh, stabilize you? Uh, you are on record to say, now what I want to do is buy my parents a house. We've always lived in a rented house. Uh, We've been living in a rented house for like, from the time I, I, uh, I know. So it, it is my dream that to buy a house for my parents. So uh, of course this WPL and uh, uh, this franchise cricket will definitely help this all these payouts and all okay so can we talk about uh, pay parity it's an unfair question many people will say because uh, if out of 180 people watch men's cricket only 20 this is a rough estimate only 20 are watching women's cricket uh, I understand that the BCCI has made match fee equal for both men and women right but do you still see you know the endorsements the pay packets of say someone like a Virat Kohli and say, kya kabhi hamare saath hoga? Or are you practical enough to realize that this is a journey, it will take time? Both of you and all three of you can answer that question, please. Like you said, kisi ne socha nahi tha ki we'll get so much crowd watching us. But now it has started. So eventually I, I know we are also going to get there. It's just our initial phase right now. I think BCI has done a lot, like you said. 
I think all the endorsement and stuff, I think slowly but eventually we'll also get there, is what I feel. And just to put things in perspective, it's not just women's cricket. The fact is that even in boardrooms, uh, anywhere, across, across the world, there is a gap between how much men get paid and how much women get paid. In India, it's 34%, just by the way. So it's not something that particularly afflicts only women's cricket, it's all across. But do you have views on that? I think... Uh, Men have achieved a lot, they have won the World Cup and all those things. I don't think so. It's right for us to say we have to get it right now. Because women's cricket is getting up there. We're watching the men's cricket as well. We're learning a lot of uh, stuff from them. I think it will eventually grow. Now it's, we've always, I mean, we've seen the grow from past 10 years or 5 years now. I think it, if the WPL platform has set up for the Indian uh, domestic girls now, so it's very important for us to keep up this momentum going and just do performing well for uh, uh, the India, uh, women's India team. And I think uh, if we keep doing that, everything else will fall in place as well. It's often said that you actually fly on the shoulders of the women who have come before you. Yes. Uh, can I just ask all three of you what next now? There is a big tournament coming. Are you all keeping your fingers crossed? Uh, well, should we start with Joy? Um, <laughs> I'm just uh, keeping myself calm huh. and uh, not expecting anything. Aren't you going to church every Sunday and saying, God, please let me get that call, please? <laughs> <laughs> I ask God that whatever your wish to be done. <laughs> I think more than anything, uh, do what's in your control is what I would like to say. Uh, we are, you worry about your own performance, keep doing your, what is in your control, everything, rest of them will fall in place. The next dream for all of us, it's the World Cup, Correct. to win the World Cup for Team India, it's the next uh, dream for all of us. I think uh, just keep calm and just keep focusing on what is in our control. I think like she said, the ultimate dream is to win a World Cup for India, but again, control the things that are in your hands, be in the present, I think just keep doing the things that we are doing and not expect too much. Do you remember how old you were when the World Cup was lifted by the men's team and what your reactions were at that point of time? I think I, I just know that after India won the T20 World Cup under Dhoni's captaincy, Correct. that was the time I wanted to start playing cricket professionally. I used to still play with my brother and you know, a lot of gully cricket, but I think it was it was that year that changed me. I wanted to pursue it professionally. I, told, I kept telling my mom, please, I want to play cricket, put me in some summer camp, I want to go, I want to and go. And your mom was actually okay telling you, koi baat nahi, padhai mat karo bhi. And you can, or, or am I making this up? Because <laughs> it's she never too good to be true. <laughs> she never said, don't study. But then no they, parents is going to say, I don't know, study. No parents will see, say that, I yeah, But they, they, they came a time where... Uh, Actually, it's an interesting story. The, the principal of the school that I was studying in wasn't too fond of me playing cricket. And she had called my mom. I was in ninth class, ninth standard at that time. She called my mom to, to the office and then she said that you're spoiling your girl's future by putting her into sport. And then my mom got really offended and then she said, look, what, I, what will I do with my, my, my daughter's future? And she left from there and I stopped studying there. I, I did my 10th in open. But then it was my mom who took that step of... That's a very yeah. cool mom to have. Would you remember? I mean, I was too young, but then when I saw the uh, Team India lifting the World Cup, I was like, one day I'll have to lift the World Cup. And that kept me going and I still have the dream to lift the World Cup for Team India. Joy, you... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, 2007 uh, uh, T20 World Cup, I've huh. seen on live on TV. I was so inspired. Huh. Uh, that was a be uh, best memory about the World Cup. And, and of course, 2011. Uh, can I ask you what the team spirit is? Uh, you know, when all of you are playing together, when you play the WPL, you're obviously playing with foreign players as well. You're playing with the best in the world, actually. You guys are also the best in the world. What is, what is that like? You know, what's the sharing like? Uh, is there camaraderie? Do the foreign players just stick to themselves? How does it work, Joy? Uh, first, it was very difficult for me uh, because I was just coming from the domestic circuit and playing in the bigger stage with somebody like Smriti Madana, Richard Ghosh, Alice Perry, Sophie Devine. It was very difficult for me, uh, you know, uh, 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 because it's your, you have to at least match them in everything. So it was very difficult for me, uh, but then I understood that it is possible only when you are calm and understand the situation 
and uh, react accordingly. So when you say it was difficult for you, was it intimidating or was it difficult? Were you a bit intimidated? I was really tensed. <laughs> Why? Why? What was... Uh, because I also read an interview where you said, you know, uh, I could barely manage with language. You know, I could speak Hindi properly, I could speak English properly, my Malayalam was okay. Uh, was that a challenge as well? Was that a ba barrier as well? Yeah, that was a very big challenge when I joined for Railways uh, back in 2011. I, have, I didn't know any of the languages. In fact, English also, Hindi, Telugu. Uh, then in one, two years, I learned all the languages. That was very challenging. Uh, those two years were very challenging for me. Then that was the only option I had. I have to learn languages. I, otherwise, I cannot survive there. How, how will you communicate? How will you communicate with your coaches? How will you communicate with your teammates, I guess? But what's the experience... Uh, you know, to have these grades in the dressing room, people you have looked, you know, looked up to and you're saying, oh God, I'm here in their presence and I'll be playing with them. What is it like? I mean, I was excited when the auction was done uh, last year and I was like, oh my God, Pez is there. Uh, so many people, Smithy is there. And I'm someone who loves to go and talk to people, just welcome them, just go and interact with them, learn a lot of stuff. Uh, because... Uh, they're going to help you in any given way, be not just uh, cricket, but also what goes uh, mentally or how strong you can get mentally. So those are the conversations which will improve you as a cricketer and as a person. So those are the small conversations which will also boost your confidence and uh, let you perform in a good way. So I thought really enjoyed uh, spending time with all my teammates because I love to. No, you to enjoy doing everything, including dancing. <laughs> And, you know, uh, someone from my team said, please ask her the question about whether she's going to pick up dancing after she quits cricket. I will we'll keep dancing, uh, not just when I leave cricket, while I'm playing cricket also, I'll just keep dancing. <laughs> well done. Go ahead. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> dancing. <laughs> yeah, you got distracted. The question was about, you know, playing with foreign players, oh, sorry, being yeah. in the same dressing room, probably playing with people you've always looked up to. What is the experience like? Is it, I mean, where does it stop being intimidating and then being, you know, okay, I'm learning so much from them? For me, it wasn't intimidating, but then again, I was actually very excited to share a dressing room with people like Meg and Marizan Cap because I've always loved Marizan Cap, she being all around herself and I was very excited to, you know, pick her brains and, you know, uh, learn a lot from them and in fact, they actually made me feel more comfortable. They, they came up to me, they spoke to me. Uh, I still remember the first time Meg Lanning, our captain, she took me aside and spoke to me for an hour and she didn't even, she knew nothing about me and, but still she just took me aside, spoke to me for an hour and it was just about me, my family, how did I grow up playing and all of these questions. I think, I think that was a great learning for me and got to learn a lot from them. So that's actually leadership. Yes. To know your troops well. Yes. You're going to go in, into war with these troops. It's best if you know them well. Yeah. When you say, you know, you pick their brains, what is it that you pick their brains about? Was it just cricket? Was it life? Was it their experiences? I think overall everything. Of course, of, of course, there's a lot to learn about cricket, but then a lot of about how they prepare themselves mentally and mentally, physically. How did, you know, just, just asking them about their experiences, how they have handled certain situations in their career. A lot of, lot of those things. Can I ask you about your inspirations? Because all of us get inspired by someone. Some of us will be inspired by our brothers. Some of us will be inspired by our parents. But were there cricketing icons that inspired you? And if you actually ended up meeting those who inspired you, and what was that meeting like? Joy? Uh, for her, I know the answer. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, growing up, Sachin Tendulkar was my idol. You uh, actually imitated him <laughs> while you were... Right? That, no, that, so that's what I read in an interview, that when I was young... I saw oh, yeah. Sachin play and yeah. then I used to try play like him. Yeah, yeah. We used to have that coconut uh, uh, wood bat and we used to write SRT 10 and all used to bat. So uh, Sachin Tendulkar was an emotion for us as a 90s kid. So yeah, uh, always wanted to uh, see him, uh, but it, which never happened. Hopefully I'll meet him someday. Soon, soon. <laughs> soon, soon. What about you? I mean, uh, for me, it's always been Virat Kohli. It's not just cricket, but also his fitness levels, which has taken the youngsters uh, uh, know how important the f fitness plays. Uh, and just watching him on the field is something, uh, you just can't take your eyes out of him. So it's so nice to see him on the field and what he's doing off the field is also very, very nice. He's uh, been inspiring a lot of youngsters like us. So... 
the day I watched him, I was like, one day I need to become like him. If not him, him, but at least close to him because his aggression is what I love the most. Yeah, talking about Tendulkar, I wanted to add something that uh, uh, I was seven years old uh, uh, when Sachin Tendulkar's Desert Storm innings. Uh, we didn't have TV in, in our home. Uh, my brother was telling me that there is an interesting match is going to happen. Let's go to the neighbor's house and let's watch that match. That is when I saw Sachin Tendulkar smashing all the odds, all the Aussie bowlers. And that is when I decided that if cricket, if women cricket is there, I have to become a cricketer. So that is why Sachin Tendulkar in my life, it's very, uh, he played a very major role. I hope you meet him soon. Yeah. I really <laughs> hope you meet him soon. Yes, yes. But Shriyanka, uh, you've spoken about Virat Kohli, you've also spoken about the fact that uh, it's of course his on-screen, uh, I mean not on-screen, uh, on-field persona, the way he plays, his fitness levels, etc. But it's also what he does off-field. For example, the way he's balanced his professional life with his personal life to, you know, take that time off uh, when his wife was delivering the second baby. It, that, that, that's something cool as well. Yeah, at some point of time, you'll have to give your time for your family, but it's also how you balance both family and your cricket career. So he's been doing it really well. Um, uh, so it's just amazing to watch him balance both cricket and family. So I think there's something for us to learn of, of that as well, just not to eliminate the family, but also balance both. I think me, when I was growing up, I was a big fan of Rahul Dravid. Uh, in fact, actually, I wanted to be a wicketkeeper. I never wanted to be a bowler because Rahul Ravid used to keep at that point of time for India. But your case coach said, wicketkeeping karna hai to chale jao ya se. My <laughs> coach himself was a wicketkeeper, so <laughs> it was very surprising. But then what he said was at that point of time, Hyderabad had already three, four keepers and they had no fast bowlers. So that was my coach's idea to become a medium pacer. But I think one week of coaching, I just told my mom, I don't want to bowl. I just want to just tell him that I want to keep, but he didn't listen. But, but yeah, I think Rahul Ravid was, was the one for me. But you had the option probably sometime later in life to make that shift, to make that change, right? You decided not to. Why? I think that after a while I just started enjoying bowling. Probably that's why. I uh, enjoyed being a bowler, being a fast bowler, just the aggression. Just then, then I think my likes, dislikes changed at that point of time. But then initially it was just, initially I wanted to be a wicket keeper. You know, there are a lot of girls watching you. There are a lot of five boys watching you as well right now. Uh, they're all hearing your stories and all of your stories, uh, I mean, they're different in many ways, but similar in very ways. And what's similar is the fact that all of you, uh, despite the fact that you come from different states, despite the fact that you come from different financial situations, have worked very, very, very hard to get where you are. There are a lot of young girls probably watching you right now. Is there something you'd want to say to them? Uh, I think just just be brave, take brave decisions and be honest with your game. Uh, work very hard because no dream is too big if, if you want it bad enough. So, so yeah. Tell me when, when were you brave? What was the bravest thing you have done? You are telling little girls be brave. What's the bravest thing you have ever done? I think me resigning from railways was one of the, I feel one of the bravest because again railways, the job gives you a lot of stability huh. which, which my family needed. Hmm. I think for me to take that step of choosing myself, mm. choosing my cricket, I think that was one of the bravest decisions that I have taken. I think enjoying w in whatever you do um, is the key for you performing well or doing well in your own way. Mm. Uh, and also just have that smile always on your face when you're tense, when you're angry, even when things are not going well, just to have that smile on your face and say, I'm still in it. So keep fighting through till the end and just don't give up. Don't give up is a, always a very good advice to give young people. Uh, tell them about the tough times as well because it can't be your, it, 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 if all three of you actually, it hasn't been, you know, a bed of roses. And uh, a lot of us talk about the successes, but a lot goes behind that success, right? There are multiple failures before that success comes. So there was a time, uh, I think pre-COVID, where I got an injury, a uh, back L4, L5 uh, dis uh, bulge. So that time I was a little disappointed because I had to miss uh, the season. And I was like, what next? So I, I always had that question, what next? Do I still continue playing cricket? What is it? Because I was, for me to lose a match, to miss a match was something out of my thoughts. So I was like, 
I don't know what to do. And then the COVID came into the picture and I was like, oh my God, I'm done. I just can't take the stress now. And uh, just to sit, do nothing, no playing, just sit and watch TV, spend time with family. And then how long are you going to do it? And then uh, my coach, Arjun sir, kind of helped me just mentally being strong and then giving me a few activities which uh, gets me going. And then when the COVID ended and then we started, I started practicing and my rehab started. Uh, the next match I played, I got a, uh, I, I got a century as well uh, in one of the games in Bangalore. And uh, then I was like, oh my God, I think I needed this break. And then I kind of got to know that break made, I mean, changed me as a person and as a cricketer because I work mentally and physically to get stronger and come back stronger. So there's always a comeback only if you believe in yourself and you have the trust in yourself is what I would like to say. That's lovely and that's beautifully said. Uh, Joy, your life actually is an inspiration for many, many people who are watching us today. Yeah, there were uh, multiple times I was dropped from the domestic side. So one of the stories goes like, <coughs> I was dropped from the domestic side and I was going back from Delhi to my home. I was really sad and I took a video while going and I posted in my social media, like I, cap I captioned it, unforgettables. Uh, it is still my stories. So I pray to God that next time if I come back to Delhi, if I, if I come back to Delhi playing, it should be different. It shouldn't be like this. Then I, then again I came back to Delhi wearing RCB, in RCB colors. I took a video and again I posted. So that is kind of belief I had in myself. I never wanted to give up. I, there was nothing in front of me. Even I don't have an India jersey also. But there was something uh, in me that kept, uh, you know, kept uh, pushing me harder. You know, I can do something. I can do something. I always... I always had that in my mind. I, I never wanted to... She's the one who's prompted me to that question about what next. Joy, do you think about what next? I know you want to build a house for your parents. But do you think about what next? I'll finish playing cricket one day. What happens after that? Do you think about it or are you too engrossed right now in your present life? I don't, uh, I don't think about it so much. I'll just live in the present. <laughs> just. I mean, I'm too young to answer I this know. question. At 21, <laughs> yes, you can't be thinking of what next. So All your generation is only the World Cup. Every five years you will be thinking what next. But yes, I know winning the World Cup for India, I think is a dream for everyone. What about you, Arundhati? I, same with me. I, I have not thought that far of what I'm going to do after cricket. But then, uh -huh. yeah, the ultimate dream is to win the World Cup for India. I hope all of you make it to the team. And I hope that India ends up winning the World Cup. Ladies, thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you, Arundhati. Priyanka and Joy, thank you very much. Thank this chat you, has brought all so. of us a lot of joy. Thanks. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much.